Well, welcome to episode seven of Diamond Dialogue. We're actually uh, joined by the enigmatic Gadawag today. Hello. Welcome. I uh, been talking to you a lot in the chat room all the time, so it's good to see you on camera here. Sure. Yeah. You too. So uh, we'll give you actually just an extra little pre-question for for everybody. Um, so what 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 do you do for Brian? <laughs> like, what, how do you know Brian in a working sense? Sure. Uh, that's changed a lot over the last year and a half. <laughs> so I was hired in December of 2012. I came on as the touring stage manager, I guess you could say. Uh, sort of an assistant type job. Right, roadie. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I traveled with him for like eight months, nine months, something like that. Um, and then towards the end of last year we started moving into more of a production focus and i started doing more of content creation um so december of last year we took over scam school production so now i spend most of my time shooting episodes of scam school and i'm the sole editor of scam school nice um and then you know occasionally lately i've been doing uh live switching for night attack uh, while Brian is out on vacation in <laughs> L.A. Um, but uh, a lot of times I just do, I make stuff. Uh, I, do, I, do, I do the the promotional stuff for scam stuff. Um, you know, taking the photos and making videos. I used to do extra credit once when we were shooting those. But yeah, Excellent. I do video production mostly. <laughs> no, that, that's amazing. I, I could have used one of you at my house when I was trying to do this on while well, I was on vacation not vacation just vacation vacation <laughs> yeah right so uh because it, it was hard to do remotely while also trying to do the show and sure use yeah. you know about six megabits of, of bandwidth to, to do that so <laughs> it was a good time but on to the actual questions uh who the hell are you which we got a little bit of that and we got a little bit of how did you get here but uh could explain a little bit more about you know how you came to know the chat room and and came to know brian and everybody sure sure uh i guess i could credit a lot of that to my dad uh so my dad was a, a big fan of tech tv and all of that stuff and so through him i kind of was introduced to that world and then he found Dignation before me because he was a fan of Kevin Rose from Tech TV. Oh, sure. And uh, and so I became a fan of Dignation within like the first eight, seven episodes. Like before they even went to video format, they were just an oh, audio yeah. podcast. Um, and so I was a really big fan of that for a long time. And then my dad found, I think my dad found Scam School before me. Because um, Scam School was, they were doing like the, the previews at the end of Dignation. Uh, for like oh, the first right. couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And so I kind of started watching Scam School through that. And then I was I was a fan of that for a while. And then eventually I started following Brian on Twitter. And that led to BB Live Show. Uh, so I was a fan of BB Live Show pretty early on. And then, of course, Night Attack and everything else after that. <laughs> right. So you just kind of followed yeah. along. That. That's awesome. That's you know sure. a lot of similar stories to you know I I watched Leo on ZDTV back in the yeah. day and so I got to know him and Patrick Norton I still watch Techzilla all the time and I love watching Patrick Norton do his thing and and actually you know get to see Shannon on there all the time and you know everybody else so no it's yeah great. totally it's great having a an early start and all that and seeing where the, where everybody's you know careers have taken them and and you know especially with the more recent change of of Tom moving over to Diamond Club and. Yeah. yeah, and Brian moving over to Diamond Club, and you know, so it's uh, a lot of fun. So what yeah. what are the origins of your name? Since we know know you as Gatawag in the, the chat room. Sure, um, Gatawag is a really dumb name. <laughs> Let's start off with that. I I came up with it. I want to say the summer after sixth grade. Um, so. I I had a couple friends who I wanted to make a company with and the idea was we were going to make games. Uh so we had a couple ideas for games, I think, and I was like it was it was really important to me that we had uh, uh like a, a company name that we could all produce stuff under. Like and board, so board I, games or like video games? Like video games. Oh, okay. Like 
Uh, of course, this was before I, I realized how hard it is to actually <laughs> make video games. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, so I came up with the name Gatoag, and it's an acronym, and it stands for Gamers Are the Ones Who Are Gaming. <laughs> and uh, it's it worked for the time, and it had really good SEO. At the time that I came up with it, there was literally one hit on Google for Gatoag, and it was like <laughs> a Spanish typo or something. <laughs> So I was like, you know, this works. Right. Um, and then we looked into video game production and realized that it's really hard. So I kind of dropped <laughs> I that. do this? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then Gatwag became a company that was going to make like merchandise and stuff. And then we dropped that too because it's like, eh, we're not super great at this. We're like in seventh grade. Um, it's like making like t-shirts then, and stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then it just, it just ended up being my online moniker nice so. that's more interesting than mine i made an anagram by middle name and no no results on on google and i was like all right yeah. <laughs> but so all right here's here's an interesting one stranded on a desert island you only get three movies and and your vcr has infinite power solar powered so what movies do you get to keep wait vcr uh, you know or dvd player or blu-ray you know, what is this, the Stone Age? Uh, yeah, but you know, you got to look at it in the sun. You got an old CRT TV that washed up on shore. Come on, what good's oh, what good's man. Blu-ray going to do? You? Right, hardly what good's DVD going to do you? But still, you know. all right. If I have to, okay. So this is this is a tough question. This is one where it's like you ask other people, and I say, oh, this their answers are dumb. Like, come <laughs> on, I have the right answers. And then when you actually ask me, it's like. I don't know anything. Right. So, in no particular order, and there are many close calls for this, but I would probably have to go with... Laserdisc. Yeah, the Laserdisc, <laughs> of course. The one true format. Right. Um, I would probably have to go with uh, 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 Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Right. I haven't the seen Edgar it, but I've heard it's decent. Oh, it's it's phenomenal. It's my favorite Edgar Wright movie, um, and it's just it's it's a lot of fun, you know. Oh sure. Um, and then probably uh, uh, Five Hundred Days of Summer because I I need to feel a connection to people. I need to have an emotional response. I suppose, and still real, still you know, stay human. Yeah. <laughs> And then probably like Inglorious Bastards because I want something to read. <laughs> uh, the the Tarantino version, and also right. it's just a masterfully created film. Right? No, it's it's yeah, it's a good film. Yeah. No, and right, a so couple it's... a couple just real quick, a couple dark horses would have been like uh, Samurai Champloo, uh, the the anime series. Yeah. I'm uh, and yeah. then you know like Legend of Korra maybe. Because that would be cool. Sorry. Not a yeah. huge fan, but it's all right. Oh. All right. We'll talk after. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. talk after. All right. Yeah. So uh, you're given a superpower. What superpower yep. is it, and what's the first thing you do with it? All right. So this one, this one, I have the answer. The like, an- Okay, you're going to top everybody else. Yeah. All right. Like, no, nobody uses this superpower. They I'm might use, like, slight variants on this superpower, but nobody has this exact superpower. All right. Hit me. I have. I mean, absolute... don't really hit me. Okay. Just tell me. Well, I mean, it would be tough through <laughs> the internet, but okay. I would have absolute control over light, hmm. right? Okay. So if I wanted to go invisible, no problem. Right, no just problem. Bend, bend it around you. Yeah. Uh, since I am in video production, like that would make my job infinitely easier, right? Like. Right. Oh, we need a light source over here. Diffuse it a bit. Boom. Right. Right. Um, and also, just like, can you imagine, like, the scientific advancements that we would get from somebody who can control light and the speed of light? Right. Never yeah. know you might be able to act, You might actually end up having power over time in a way. Sure, yeah. Being able to slow down light or the light particles of something. And, eh, it's interesting. All right. So I like it. Yeah. So, so what's the first thing you do with it, though? Oh, the first—I mean, the first thing I do with it—it it would be a parlor trick. 
right? Well, I would I just, suppose. I would, I would, it would be like you know that 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 opening scene in the first Harry Potter where like uh, 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 what's his face uh, Dumbledore is going around like with the little light thing, oh, and like he's sucking like, the lights bolt out of the bolt. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> and I'd just be like playing with light, like making little balls of light and messing with people and stuff going like to that. Raves, I would just, you know, <laughs> yeah, I would just be testing the boundaries of the power. All right. I suppose yeah. that's a good first thing to do is figure out what the hell you can do. <laughs> sure. Sorry, one second. Get out of here. There we go. All right, sorry. Cat was okay. pawing at the strings that are on my headphones. and Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, well, what, what video games are you playing recently? Or I, I suppose any games. You can, you can do card games or play Solitaire sure. a lot. I don't know. I play Solitaire sometimes. Not really. <laughs> uh I do play video games from time to time. Um, I guess I guess a big one that I've kind of been into lately is Space Engine, space which isn't Engine. Is that like some sort of racially insensitive space narrative about natives? Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, but it's it's not really a game so much as just like a, a tool to explore space it kind of has it kind of uh, uh it tries to recreate the universe it uses a lot of documentation to oh, okay rebuild stuff and then for stuff that isn't documented but we know that there's stuff out there like it'll procedurally generate that hmm. That's pretty it, it's just really interesting to kind of go out and explore stuff yeah um but other than that like i haven't played it yet but i i really want to play uh gods will be watching i believe it's called uh, it's a new indie game that came out like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, uh, and it's all about like resource management. It has a really cool pixel art style. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and apparently it's really hard. I haven't I haven't gotten the chance to mess with it yet, though. I, yeah, I haven't heard about that one yet. Oh, uh, Travis has a uh, a comment on your your superpower. He says, <laughs> "Please tell me you activate the power by clapping, clap on, clap off." <laughs> well. I, I think it's more of a mental thing, but if you wanted to, you right. know, that could be part of the effect. Like you could <laughs> activate it as you're clapping to kind of be like, "Oh, look, it's clap on, clap <laughs> on." So that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. So speaking of space, since Space Engine was your when your you know picks for video games, if you can move to any planet, what would it be and describe your house? And of course, this can be you know real or postulated or science fiction or or whatever. Yeah. That's that's definitely the hardest question because it's it's that's a weird question. Exactly, that's but, the point. <laughs> yeah. But if I had to pick like the the only answer that comes to mind that makes any kind of sense would be um I would want to go to the Hey Arnold universe and live in Arnold's room. And live in just just in his room like the whole planet is just his room. Oh my god. I didn't even think about that, but yes. <laughs> Cuz his room is like the coolest room on the planet. Nice. So, so, so where well. would you where would you live in his room? What would be your house? Oh, uh right underneath the right underneath the the sunroof, the that kind of area. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's 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 a window panel that kind of opens up to the roof. I'd probably yeah. live right around there. Right. And so, yeah. so if the whole planet is the room, what happens if you go out the window? You don't want to know. <laughs> that sounds really scary. You, you go into some alternate dimension. Yeah, <laughs> you go into like, you go into the the dimension that's the Hey Arnold movie, <laughs> and it would just be kind of weird. It, like like when Homer went three D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, you said at the top that you were doing a lot of scam school work and stuff. What's the favorite your favorite ad that you ever did for scam school? Um, I mean, there are a lot of good ones. Um, the her ad was really good. I really like that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good uh, one. Yeah, we just did a uh, well, I just did a 2001 ad recently that was really good. Um, we did a Pokemon ad, a Pokemon Red ad this week i don't think i saw that oh you just did i was gonna say i haven't i don't think i've seen that one yeah that was the that was this past week it was really well received we did a twilight zone ad which i really liked um 
if I had to pick one, I would probably go with uh, Pokemon, just because it's the most recent one. Okay, this is the most recent one you can think of. Yeah, and also it's just like I I always tell everyone that like I hate all the stuff that I make and I think it's all horrible. So uh, if it's the most recent one, I feel like it's probably by default the best one. <laughs> Um, so, you, you know, I, yeah. All right. So what's your favorite non-scam school or diamond club moment? Like something you did crazy at a party or just something random that happened to you walking down the street, found a million dollar bill, which would be fake because they don't exist, but still it would be, it'd be interesting, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would be a story. <laughs> right. At the very least. Um, I'm, this is this is sort of half in the spirit of the question uh, because it was made possible by Brian. Oh, okay. And Dime Club and all that stuff. But uh, last year, I want to say it was last year, like late last year, uh, we went out to LA for some show thing. And, um, and, while we were out there, I was able to, it was like the coolest day ever. Uh, we, I woke up late, which usually you don't get to do when you're out traveling doing the stage show and stuff. Right. And, uh, and we drove into LA and we had lunch with Peter Serretta from, he's the main guy at Slash Film. Hmm. Uh, and Andrew Main, which was really cool to meet him for the first time. Right. And Dan Trachtenberg, who I've been a fan of TRS since it started. So that was that was a really big thing for me. Um, and then, you know, just getting to hang out with those people. Uh, Dan recognized me, which was super weird because, you know, like we've we've never talked or anything. But, you know, right. I, I had, you know, emailed in wallpapers and stuff for TRS back when they were using user-submitted wallpapers. Oh, right. Um, and I had also been talking to him through Twitter over the years, a little bit here and there. And so he kind of just sort of recognized me over time through that, I guess. Oh, that's um, like, I guess, from, from Twitter avatars and stuff. Yeah, and, and also, like, I had, I had been uh, sending him a couple tweets like a week before or something, so it was probably fresh on his mind. <laughs> right. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and then after that, we we walked across the street and went to a uh, live Harmontown. Oh, awesome. And, yeah, and so that was really, really cool being able to, uh, you know, see Dan and be a part of that experience. No, that totally. Do they actually they actually get out the, the D&D, like, blind and everything when they do the D&D? No. Uh, and also, uh, 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 what's his face? Uh, uh, Jeff wasn't there that day. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so he wasn't comp trolling or anything because it was his birthday. Uh, I don't think they even played D and D that day. But yeah, it, it was it was cool anyway. Just because like it it was weird because you're kind of in the back and it's super weird just seeing everybody and having this whole new context apply to a strictly audio podcast right something that you're not used to to actually see yeah. what they look like or anything yeah and i was like even though the, i don't think it was like the best episode that we could have showed up to it was this such a surreal experience and i was so bummed afterwards because it's like now i have to go back to this just audio format and like i feel like i'm missing out on so much and it was cool like being able to hear voices that you have names attached to but you've never seen them before right you don't really know what they look like yeah but it, it was really cool no that sounds amazing that's i've, I've been ever since you know brian and, and justin have talk on and on and on about harmontown <laughs> i decided i should finally start listening to it and it's oh just hilarious like yeah, it, yeah. it's super smart super funny yeah exactly yeah. Uh, pretty much what I, I i would expect from you know watching archer and, and everything like that and rick and morty and you know all that stuff so mm -hmm. all right now, now we're gonna have a, a standard reddit question just because i i think your answer will be interesting and um what would you rather fight 
one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? I mean, the answer for that's pretty easy. Obviously, you'd go with a hundred duck-sized horses, right? So, and why? We've got to have the why yeah. in there. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, because they're yeah yeah they're a swarm. Sure, I think that's a lot less terrifying than a giant scaled duck. <laughs> Um, but they're I little horses. Like, I mean, they're like, I don't know, ducks are like that big. Like yeah, I mean, they're they're well off sized. But I mean, if 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 there's enough of them, like you could just jump up and like run across them and stuff. <laughs> like, just like I squish mean, them under your feet. <laughs> yeah, and you could probably, you could pro. Well, how fast are ducks? Ducks are you pretty probably, fast. Yeah, I mean, you could probably outrun a duck if if you're really put up to the task. Um, but a horse, I like, mean, a duck-sized horse though, that'd be faster. Yeah, right. So I think that would that would be you would be worse off against that. And plus, a duck size or a horse-sized duck, like a bite from that, that's gonna really that's gonna really put a dent in you a lot more than you know a couple snips from regular-sized ducks, right? Well, that's true, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, at the very least, a hundred size, or a hundred ducks, you know, like, that's going to buy you some time, right? Because not all of those ducks are going to bite you at once. They're just duck-sized horses. They're actually horses, so they might. Oh, right, so horses. So, I mean, you could just ride on them, right? Except that they're duck size. Yeah, that's fine. How do you how do you ride? <laughs> your your human size. How do you how yeah. do you ride that? I don't know. You get down on your knees. You just kind of woo, <laughs> right? You ride I, them as like like jet skis. <laughs> like jet. I, I picture you doing this like with your dogs at home or something. <laughs> yeah, Trying well, to ride. I, get up. Woo. And, <laughs> and to, to that point, I mean, horses are a lot less terrifying. I think. I, I mean, I, I think ducks are a lot dirtier. And I think ducks are a lot meaner. <laughs> meaner? Ducks are cuddly, man. Uh, maybe domesticated ducks. Are these domesticated ducks or are they wild ducks? The, the horse-sized ones. The question never specifies. Maybe uh, well, they hang out at a lake? I'm just going to go people. the safe route and assume that they're wild, right? Because that's way more dangerous. You know, I think... The, the 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 worst thing about a horse is that like is their size right because if if you get on the wrong side of a horse you know they'll just kick you and yeah, really big. mess you up right but if it's the size of a duck man like what are you gonna do yeah, that's true they could trample you still if they could knock you down yeah probably it's a hundred I mean, of them there's a lot what yeah if they form a duck sized horse pyramid <laughs> yeah a, a trojan duck sized horse a tro <laughs> sure but i say you just you just like jump on them and like ride them like crowd surfing <laughs> like crowd surfing yeah all right that sounds plausible it's, uh, sure sure we'll let mythbusters test it yeah <laughs> let the professionals handle let that the professionals handle <laughs> Well, awesome, man. So do you got any uh, plugs to tell anybody about? Anything you want to pimp out? Pimper? Uh, my Twitter. Twitter. I usually post stuff there. Um, I also post stuff on Facebook. But the weird thing is, you know, I used to think it was cool if, like, oh, go ahead, add me on Facebook because I use that too and I use it for kind of different purposes because they're different demos. Right. Um, but then, like, when you have somebody add you on Facebook and it's like you have to like no mutual friends and they don't really say anything like, oh, hey, I, I saw you on this thing. Then it's just like you're some weird random person trying to add <laughs> right. me and I, I so don't trust you. Um, but if you have mutual friends, you can add me there. Um, <laughs> or you can just follow me on Twitter. I also post a lot of the same stuff to Twitter. I post different stuff on Twitter as well. Um, you can go check out Scam School because I spent a lot of time working on Scam School and making it respectable and fun and entertaining. Eh, uh, and that's... I don't know about respectable, but, but we'll call it fun and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Discovery Network show, I'll have you know, sir. Oh. 
That's yeah. So so is uh uh oh what's the what's the stupid towing one or I don't know. They have a bunch of crap shows too. Ancient Aliens is a historic is is a history channel show. Decline to comment. <laughs> no way, that's history, uh, not discovery. Yeah, that's that's no, no, discovery is mostly better, but still, ice road truckers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, we're the we're part of the digital branch. That's all different, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got revision three with you too, so I'll give you that much. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Um, and so you can check that out. Usually YouTube is the best place to find that. So youtube.com slash scam school. Uh, go ahead, like, subscribe, talk about how great the ads are. Because I usually star in a lot of those lately. They are good. They're awesome. I Half appreciate the that. I watch the show. Yeah. Um, Maybe a and quarter. Quarter the reason. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, my 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 goal is to have those ads be a hundred percent of the reason why you watch the show. So. Well, then why why don't you just start your own show, Brant Hughes ads? I could do that. I sort of do that by just posting the ads on Wikipedia videos <laughs> by themselves. Right. Um, but also I get paid to do scam school, so. Eh, uh, true. <laughs> it's a little um, easier using Brian's systems too. I'm sure to do editing and stuff. Yeah, for sure. So that's about it. If I do anything else, usually I'll post it on there. Uh, check out Night Attack if you want. I've, I've been switching those lately. Yeah, mm. you've been doing a good job. I appreciate that. Oh, sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Well, of course. Everybody uh, go follow Gatawag on Twitter. He, uh, I'm sure appreciates the followers. You getting up in the uh, double digits yet? Hmm? Are you getting up in the double digits yet on uh, Twitter? Twitter, <laughs> I got, I got like six hundred and fifty followers or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. It's 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 coming along. Nicely. I got like a hundred. So I'm like, <laughs> of I course about, I never. I had tweet about anything, like eighty so. before Brian hired me. Right. I okay. Mean, so that helps. Came in from that. Yeah. Well, excellent. Thank you uh, again for being on the show. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and uh, let the music play us out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Feel that groove. Elevator groove. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yo, yo. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Nashville oh. remix. <laughs> Break it down now. <laughs>